Hey, Steve Gamash here with Chef Knives to Go Quick Look Product Review. And what we're checking out this time is the Ogata White No. 2 Guto 240mm knife. This line of knives has a core steel of what's known as Shidogami or White Paper No. 2 Reactive High Carbon Steel from Hitachi. The heat treats about 61 Rockwell on that core steel. These are all made by hand and hand hammered, and that's kind of what they shoot for with the heat treat. Um, the construction is all reactive, so there's no stainless on here. So what the construction is made up of a soft iron layered cladding over the top of that uh, harder reactive white number two core steel. So the cladding does have a protective Kudauchi or blacksmith finish. It's a matte black finish on it, but often the reactive iron cladding is more reactive than the core steel on these types of knives. So you will really have to keep up with it in terms of keeping it dry, wiping it down between if it's going to sit on the board until you build up a patina on it that'll help tremendously. But you can create some really cool looks on this, especially if you slice up some poultry or other meats. You get nice blues and purples and different kind of hues on it. It's pretty cool. So uh, that is an all-reactive blade, FYI. It's also fairly light for the size of it. So this particular one is 6.6 .6 ounces, 187 grams, and these will vary a little bit in size and dimensions and spine thickness and such because they're all handmade. This one is 246 millimeters at the edge, or about 9.7 inches, and the overall length about 400 millimeters in total. So it's a fairly decent sized blade. The spine thickness coming out of the handle, a, a little bit about the handle over the back of the blade, the chin, is about 3.3 millimeters on this one. And it tapers down, kind of a gentle taper, till about halfway down the blade, then holds oh, maybe 2-ish millimeters or so, and then thins out real nice at the grind, and you get a very thin tip, and the tip does really nice on this knife. The blade height is 54.6 on this one, so this particular one is pretty tall, and in general, their gutos are pretty tall. It's just the, their style. The handle is just a good, standard, basic um, oval rosewood handle with a black pack of wood, which is a stabilized wood ferrule. Pretty standard type handle. A lot of knives with Jeff Knives to go. It's just got really nice fit and finish, very comfortable to hold. Uh, the handle installs on all the Ogatas. I've seen five of them in this batch, and they've all been really nicely installed with uh, tight fit and finish on the install and glue up, so uh, that's a good sign. It means they take the time to do things right. The um, circumference of the handle, which is how I size them right here where the ferrule meets the wood, it's about three inches, pretty standard size handle. The style on their blades is, again, tall, and then their necks are rather thin, So, and you've got a spot for your finger back here for a pinch grip, so you get loads and loads of board clearance with these. So um, if you've got larger hands, this might be a really good choice for you if you need clearance and you have trouble with other shorter or less tall knives. The uh, balance point is going to be a little farther forward because it's a you know bigger blade, but that's the balance point for me where my finger is, and my pinch grip's a little bit behind that. So what's nice about this, it's a fairly light blade overall, but you get a little bit of weight forward uh, bias to the balance point, and that uh, gives you a little bit of chopping power. So it's kind of a neat combination. So let's take a close-up look at this thing. So here's what the blade looks like. So they've got a cool look. It's um, a frosted finish, and you can see the layers of the cladding, and then your core steel showing at the edge, and then your Kudauchi or blacksmith finish. So where the differentiation here, this is called your blade road. This is where the grind of the knife starts. This is the blade flat up here. So this is where it starts tapering down to the edge on each side. And it's a pretty substantially sized blade road, which means this gets really thin at the edge and tapers gently, which means you get uh, low wedging on this knife. The right side of the blade, or excuse me, the left side of the blade as you hold it does have hand chisel kanji. Unfortunately, the Kudauchi finish kind of fills in some of those cracks and crevices where they do the chiseling, so it's it, you can feel it, but unfortunately it's not too visually apparent, but it is definitely there. Fit and finish is good on the blade. Uh, they've taken enough time to relieve just a little bit of the edges on the top of the spine, and then also done a nice job on the choil, the back of the blade, into the curve of the neck, into the handle, so it's very comfortable right out of the box. The neck also is a a sign of true San Mai construction where you've got the layers on either side of the core steel and then you can see that all the way down the spine. So they don't cover the spine with the cladding. They just go up to the top and then you can see the construction. It's pretty cool. So uh, let's see what else. These are ground, as I mentioned, pretty darn thin at the edge. The performance is excellent on these. 
And then they've also got nicely ground blade road. So as you sight down it through a, on a, against a light source, you can kind of see where the waves and stuff are in the blade. And it, you can't always tell perfectly, but this one looks pretty clean. And most of these look pretty clean. So they do a nice job, I think, on their grinds. Um, out of the box edge was about a 6 out of 10. Um, it had a pretty nicely done edge on it, uh, but you can get it a lot sharper if you know what you're doing. If you don't know how to sharpen, I would encourage you to have chef knives to go sharpen this for you before they send it to you. They'll charge you for that, but it's really well worth it because you'll have a good reference point as to what sharp really is and also what the edge retention should be like on a correctly sharpened knife. Not a bad idea to do that. Let's take a look at it on our cutting board. This knife is a very good performer. I think it's got good all-around characteristics. It is all reactive. You have to be willing to deal with that, but you're rewarded with a really interesting and nice knife. Um, so here's our profile. Every knife might have a little different profile because they, you know, they grind it by hand, but it's very smooth. All the Ugatas I've seen have been quite smooth on their profile. No hiccups or bumps or dips in them. And this one has just a slight back belly and a little bit of flat and then a gentle curve. And then see the tip itself is fairly high in relation to the center line of the blade as far as, you know, going horizontal on the blade. And what that does is give you a fair amount of belly towards the tip, which means I can get pretty high on rocking. I can get way up there. So this will make a nice rocker for even pretty high stuff, onions and stuff like that. Also, you can glide it back and forth, guillotine and glide, uh, push cuts, pull cuts. Uh, so it's really good, I think, for everything but straight chopping. And if you get a little motion in your chop, you can probably still do stuff pretty well uh, also. So just, I think, a pretty good all-around profile. So it's a nice line of knives. So if you're interested in something that's got great, easy to sharpen, Shidogami uh, Hitachi Steel, and you want something that looks cool, that's kind of old school, very good performer, slight bit of kind of moderate heft to it. It's a pretty cool knife. So this is the Ogata Shidogami Number no. 2 Guto 240mm knife.